Hi, my name is Mike Vernon with Ipsen. And this is John Sarbnack from Oracon Libel Vacuum USA. And we're going to go over an oil change and a preventative maintenance on a Titan vacuum furnace pumping system. Okay. Prior to doing any maintenance work on the, on the pumping package, please remember to follow your company's lockout tagout procedure. What we have here is an SV200 backing a WAU501 roots blower. Prior to doing any maintenance work on the roots blower, we want to vent it, and that can be easily accomplished by removing the clamp and the pressure sensor at the inlet of the pump. Simply just open it up until you stop hearing the air rushing through. Okay, so now we're going to go through the, the booster pump oil change and the, the, the dripper oil change. Correct. Uh, it's important to note that on this pump you have two separate oil chambers that we want to fill with oil. The first is the front of the pump. This is the main oil chamber. Prior to draining the oil out, I like to remove the oil fill plug. It's an 8mm plug. I'd like to remove that first. What that does is gives a better, smoother oil flow as it's coming out. Yeah. If you leave it in, it's going to want to burp on you. And yeah. Then we'll have our oil drain pan underneath, and we'll remove the oil drain plug underneath the pump. I prefer that the oil be warm to hot. Yeah. Is you, it a better oil change? Yes, it is. A, it's, you will get much more oil out it when it's in the warm versus a cold state. Okay. So, again, once the oil's drained out, Remove your drain pan, and I recommend taking a rag and some, maybe some uh, alcohol and cleaning the gasket and the plug off prior to reinstallation. One of the, what you want to watch out for is you don't over tighten the oil drain. It has to be tight, but you don't want to tighten it to the point that you squeeze out the gasket. Okay, prior to putting the oil fill plug in though, we do want to re refill the pump with oil. Okay, so what uh, level do we put it to on the site? Okay, well first off we want to make sure we're using LVO 100 oil for this pump. Okay. We want to, of course we'd have a funnel, we'd fill the pump up with oil till the oil level is at the half the site glass. At which point we would stop and I'd give it 10 minutes. During that 10 minutes the oil is going to equalize, in other words the oil is going to travel from this side of the pump over to the motor end of the pump. It's going to equalize and then it'll stabilize. It may drop as much as a half an inch during that time. Okay. Now, at which point we've waited our 10 minutes and the oil level has dropped. We're going to want to bring the oil level, we're going to add oil and bring the level back up to at least a half a sight glass and maybe a bit more to the, there's a large circle in the middle of this oil sight glass. We're going to want to fill to the top of the larger circle. So it could be anywhere from the middle of that larger circle to the top of the larger circle. All right, at this point, the WAU501 is not running. We're about to uh, start it up. I want to notice the oil level. It's at the top of the top circle, or the big circle in the center. Um, when we start this pump, the oil level is going to drop at this point. So uh, go ahead and start it. Okay, you can see the oil level has dropped to about a third of a sight glass. And that is typical. Okay, so we got the main oil change done, but we still have the, the dripper for the shaft seal, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, for so this. What type of oil is this? Is this is also, the oil that goes into the oiler or the dripper is the same oil that is used in the main so oil circuit. oil contamination. Right, there's no, no, no need, no uh, concern about cross-contamination. Again, it's LVO 100 for the, the, we call it the oil seal housing oil. Okay. So next we're going to talk about the shaft seal housing. So what do we have to do to change the oil on this? All right. Well, again, it's the same as the, the main oil supply in the pump. We want it to be warm prior to changing the oil. So probably right after turning it off. Correct. Okay. First off, you want to have your oil drain pan, and you want to put it underneath the drain plug for the shaft seal housing. Then you simply just remove the, the plug, which is the same plug as we were using on the on the other side of the, the, the oil drain and fill for the other side of the pump. We'd remove that drain, let the oil drain out of the pump completely, at which time while it's draining it'd be a good time to check the condition of your oil drain plug gasket. 
Um, if it's not perfect, please replace it with a new one. Okay, now once the oil is completely drained out of the shaft seal housing area, I'm going to take a rag and wipe off any residual oil and reinstall the oil drain plug. Again, not over tightening. It must be tight, but not over tightened. All right, now I recommend removing the oil cup completely from the pump prior and using a funnel. What I also re <clears throat> recommend using is on the back of the pump, on the back of the oil container, it is actually marked with graduated marks on how much oil. So for milliliters? It has, this is in milliliters. I recommend starting with 800 milliliters in the pump. The reason is you can't see the oil going in. You can't see the oil level. Yeah. So if you have 800 milliliters in your container and you pour that in, you're sure not to overfill and have the oil come out and run down over your seal housing. Okay, once you get the 800 milliliters oil in the pump, you can top it off using an oil squirt cam with the same type of oil, of course. Okay. Uh, once you see the oil level get near the top of the housing, stop, reinstall your oil cup, tighten it down. Again, you have the same gasket on that and you want <coughs> on the oil cup as you do on the plugs. Make sure that, that gasket is in good condition. Tighten it, but do not over tighten the oil cup. Again, with the oil uh, squirt can, you want to fill the oil cup up to one-third. Roughly one-third, it's not that critical, but you shoot for one-third. So is that oil level going to fluctuate at all? Well, as the pump heats up, it will go up somewhat. Okay. But now that would be, uh, that can vary from temperature. If it's 100 degrees in your shop, it's going to go up more than it would if it's 60 degrees. Okay. And pump temperature also plays a part in how far that oil will rise and fall. So the real issue is if there's no oil. If the oil leak becomes a case where you've got to add oil once a week or maybe even more often, yeah. it needs to be addressed and repaired. The shaft you might cells. want to give us a call and we can come out and inspect the equipment. Okay. Okay, so is there anything else we need to go over on the booster pump? Yeah, I definitely recommend checking the inlet screen prior to reinstalling the pump. Okay, so how would you do that? All right, simply remove the four nuts on the bottom of the flange here. They're uh, 19 millimeter or three quarter inch nuts. So we simply just remove the four nuts. And that remove the flange. Okay, so then here's the actual sieve. Yes. So it, there doesn't appear to be any debris inside, so that's good. Yeah, on this particular pump we've, we've done really good. There's not much material. Uh, if there was, you'd, you'd blow it out with compressed air or a rag and alcohol. Um, you always want to play, pay close attention to the condition of the O-ring. In this case, the O-ring is in perfect condition. We want to make sure that the pump is physically clean, especially the motor area, the fan, the fan cover, the fins, in between the fins on the motor, and the slots going into the seal housing area. We can use compressed air, a vacuum cleaner, a rag with alcohol, whatever it takes to get the job done, but we want to make sure that these, these areas are cleaned on a regular basis. So next we're going to talk about the, the bypass valve on the booster pump. Yeah, it's important to check that periodically. I, I recommend during normal oil changes or if you're seeing a performance issue with your pump package, in other words, the vacuum level is not getting down to where you want or it's taking longer to pull the vacuum that you normally were getting. So how would we inspect that? All right, that's a relatively simple process. This is your bypass valve. There's four screws. Okay. You want to remove all four screws. Meanwhile, keep your hand gently on that bypass valve that is spring-loaded and gently and carefully pull it out. Okay, what you've got there is the housing in the spring. I'll take that from you. Now we have the piston, the actual valve itself. What's important to note here is the condition of the O-ring on the piston and the condition of the O-ring on the housing. There is an inside o-ring we want to make sure that that's in place too and in good condition but your two main o-rings for sealing is the o-ring on this side of the piston the solid side and the o-ring on the housing we want to make sure there's no dirt we want to make sure the o-rings are clean also at that point we want to check inside the housing make sure there's no dirt where the seal the o-ring seals inside the housing we want to make sure that's clean and undamaged so simply Reinstall the piston onto the housing. One thing you want to check for 
is you want to push that piston all the way down and let it come up. You want to make sure that it's moving freely. So then we carefully reinstall the unit as a package, making sure there are three O-rings involved, make sure all three O-rings are in place and in good shape. Reinstall carefully into the housing, nice clean housing. And go ahead and apply the four screws.